Hey everyone, welcome to FPL Club for another video. It's time really to do a wildcard draft for Game Week 27. Many managers, including myself, have already played the wildcard in Game Week 26. And those managers who had the likes of Salah, Trent, Nunez and Gakpo are the ones who regretted playing wildcard in Game Week 26. But for me, it doesn't matter because my wildcard team has played almost similar points to my non-wildcard team. Anyways, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let's jump into the draft. In goal, let's start off with Raya. Decent double in gimmick 27 against Everton and Southampton and then Leicester at home in gimmick 28 and double again in gimmick 29. He makes lots of saves as well. He has a good pick for your wildcard team. He, he also has a confirmed fixture in gimmick 32 in case you're not free hitting. A uh, very good long term pick. Moving on to the defense, let's start off with Stupinian. A double game week in 27 and 29. Of course, blank game week in game week 28. But it shouldn't be a concern too much because, of course, you need at least two or three Brighton players in your wildcard team. Not only because they have two double game week in three weeks, but they also have three more double game weeks after game week 29. These Brighton players are so cheap that you can afford to bench them in those tricky fixtures. Next is Rico Henry. He is the second Brantford player that you should have in your wildcard team. Much cheaper in price, but you can still expect the same returns as like of Ben Mee. But of course, it will allow you to use those extra funds elsewhere in your team. Just like Raya is a good long-term shout, two double game weeks plus the confirmed fixtures in game week 28 and 32. Next is Trippier. Despite Newcastle not being as good defensive team as they were a few weeks ago, Trippier is still a good FPL shout. Their upcoming fixtures are looking good, plus they have the confirmed fixtures in game week 28 and 32 and the double game week in game week 29. Newcastle are expected to have more doubles as well after game week 29. Some clean sheets are expected from Newcastle. Like always, clean sheet means not only clean sheet points, but also the three bonus points as well for Trippier. So here you go, this is Trippier for you. Moving on to the midfield, let's start with Metama. He is having a fine season under the Zerbi. He is scoring goals and assisting just for fun. Very cheap in price, very good value. I think he is a good shout and a must have pick. He is also a good captain to pick alongside Tony for the double game week 27. I think he's going to be one of the most popular pick in everyone's wildcard. Couple double game weeks and at least three more fixtures to be rearranged after game week 29. So don't build your wildcard without him. Next of course is another Brighton midfielder, Solly March. That's your third Brighton player in this draft. Same like Metama, March is also having attack attacking potential. If you go by stats, his numbers are even better than Metama. Again, cheap player and brings lots of quality into your team. Next is Rashford. Despite Manchester United got heavily hammered by Liverpool, Marcus Rashford is still a must-have FPL pick for your wildcard team. He is in tremendous form. He has some good fixtures and a double gimmick in gimmick 29, but he does have a blank gimmick in gimmick 28 and possibly another blank in gimmick 32 as well. But if you are free hitting in gimmick 32, then you don't need to worry about it a lot. But then they might possibly have another double gimmick in gimmick 34 or 37 as well. But even without that, Marcus is hard to ignore at the moment. So make sure you include him in your wildcard team. Next is Saka. I have included few Arsenal players in this draft to get at least 10 decent players for game week 28. But then of course you can transfer them out in game week 29 for more double game week players. But Saka might still be a good option to hold on to. He is in good form, he is on penalties as well. I think if you want to keep at least one Arsenal player for long term, then that player could be Saka. As things stands, Arsenal have no more double or blanks from now until the end of the season. Moving on to the forwards, Harry Kane is the first pick. He does have a confirmed fixture in gimmick 28, but he doesn't have a double in gimmick 29. And of course, he has some easy fixtures from the next four to five game weeks. He's actually a good captaincy shout for game week 28 against Southampton. I think Kane is also one of the most uh, popular pick in everyone's wildcard team. Next is Erling Haaland. 
At this stage where he has a single gimmick in gimmick 27, blank in gimmick 28 and no double in gimmick 29 as well. Lots of people are trying not to include him in their wildcard teams with the option to transfer him in in gimmick 30 or onwards which is perfectly fair. But some of you might still be okay with his blank in gimmick 28 and single gimmick in gimmick 29 and most importantly due to the value tied up there you don't want to exclude him from your team. That's also understandable. But if you look at the fixtures, he plays Southampton away and then blank gimmick in game week 28 and then they play Liverpool in game week 29, which is not very ideal. So at the end of this video, I will quickly show another draft without Erling Haaland that you could go for as well. But if you choose to keep Haaland into your team, keep in mind that he is not a good captaincy option for game week 27 and game week 29 and plus you won't be able to feel 10 or 11 players for gimmick 28 unless you decide to keep him for Southampton game where he, he could score a decent amount of points and transfer him out for gimmick 28 for, for the likes of Oli Watkins. But again, if you're not captaining him in gimmick 27, then probably it's not worth it to keep him for one gimmick and use one free transfer in gimmick 28 to transfer him out and you might not have the flexibility to bring more double gimmick players in gimmick 29, especially if you're planning to bench boost in gimmick 29. So these are the few points that I want you to keep in mind to decide whether you want to keep Alan in your wildcard team or you want to go without him. So the third and final pick in this draft is uh, Tony. Double gimmick in 27, Leicester in 28 and another double gimmick in 29 really makes him a very interesting pick. There are still two concerns. First, he is already on 8 yellow cards and if he happened to get 2 more in any of the next 5 fixtures, he will get suspended for 2 games. So I think he is well aware of the situation and of course he might try not to get booked. But let's not forget that he usually gets booked quite often. But there is still all the chances that they might not get two yellow cards from now until game week 29. Now the second concern of course is legal matters. There are some uncertainty really about this future. There are a few reports suggesting that no actions will be taken until uh, April, which means he could play double game week 27 and game week 28 no problem. And then there is international break before Premier League resume and both fixtures of game week 29 are played in the first week of April. So then in this case, he is really a doubt for gimmick 29. I think only time will tell what, what happens until then. But even with that, I think it's better to have him for the upcoming three fixtures. He is in good form and he is on penalties as well. I would still recommend to have him in your wildcard team. But if you're not wildcarding and you still don't have him, then wait until the deadline before you transfer him in. Who knows, we might be getting some more news about this ban or stuff like that before the deadline, especially in the press conferences. Bench consisted of Kepa, Zinchenko, Odegaard and Botman. You can do the order of your bench according to your own choice. Also, you could go for Gabriel or Saliba instead of Zinchenko or Martinelli instead of Odegaard, especially if Nketiah is not available and Trossard is injured, Martin Lee could play as a striker. And of course, you could go for Fabian Scher instead of Botman. So those are totally your choices and all of them are good shouts. Captaincy for Gimmick 27 is on Metema and vice captain is Tony and you could do it vice versa as well. Even March is not a bad shout. So the problem with this draft is it won't allow you to roll your transfer for game week 28 and even if you transfer Haaland out for Watkins, you will still have 10 playing players for game week 28 and then you will only have one free transfer for game week 29. In order to bring the likes of Bruno or Shaw for Zinchenko and Odegaard, you will need to take a minus four head. And if you are still okay with that, then this draft is for you. But otherwise, this is another draft which looks more ideal but you don't have Erling Haaland in this draft and the value tied up in him would be gone. But the upside is you're still having three Brighton, three Brantford players for the double gimmick 27 and you will have 10 decent playing players in gimmick 28 without even making a transfer. And then the two free transfers in gimmick 29 will allow you to bring Bruno and Shaw for those Arsenal players without taking a hit. You will then have a good bench boost 
team ready to rock and roll for game week 29. Only Kane and Saka would be the single game weekers. But the downside for this draft is, of course, steel. I think he might be in Brighton starting 11 from now on, but we still need to see what happens. Captaincy option still remain the same here. Whoever from this three we are comfortable with will be your captain. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed the content. Please make sure to give it a like and subscribe. The